to get out of my face. But she used to constantly tell me that because I cried all the time. And that was another moment when God's dealing with you. That's before I got filled with the Holy Spirit and all that happened. But I would be at work crying like a baby trying to do my job, just burst out crying. And um, she said, you need God. So that when that time came and I got filled and everything, and I laid in my bed and I cried out to God. And before I got filled, I cried out to him in the bed and spoke it so in my heart and said, I mean, this thing, see, these are things, these are keeping factors. God was dealing with me this time that I would not backslide like I did the first time, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, I never left you. You left me. I was here all along for you. And when I got that, that uh, ep moment, epiphany moment in the bed, you know, I was already crying because of the emptiness and void, but I did a different cry, okay? This was a cry of release, a better cry, a cry of joy. I cried, oh, hoo -hoo. Yeah. you know, it was like, oh, hoo -hoo. Ooh. it was an ugly cry. Ooh. You know, my brother already said, you cry ugly. <laughs> you know, he told me that because I was at church before and the prophet called me up, you know, and I had just gone through some things and she called me up, spoke to all those areas. And of course, he had it on videotape. He got home. We all with my mom. He's showing the videotape. Look at you. You crying ugly. Crying. It was ugly. I don't know. It was like that was before I was like, you know, I was getting transformed. I just begin, begin to get cleaned up. Okay? I just began to get cleaned up. But I was in that bed when the Holy Spirit, when God spoke to me, and I cried out a deep, gut wrench cry. And that cry was a liberation of liberation and salvation and truth. And, I, and so you don't per se have to come here and give your life to God. You can give your life to God right in your bed. And that's what I did. I gave myself to God right after I had backslid and I rededicated my life in the bed. That's when I gave my life back to him. And then after that, I went to a service, a New Year's Eve service at my mom's church. And, um, and I was already saved because I got him saved in bed. And then that prophet, that same prophet that was there ooh, a couple of years before was there again and called me and said, y'all heard this past part of the testimony, I'm going to go on and, 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 and he began to expound all this stuff and give me this word about this and that and said, you're going to get married. And I said, I know not one man. Y'all heard me say that I know too many of them. <laughs> you know, praise God. But I was just trying to say that you should have conversions all along in that same bed. I had a heaven and hell experience in that same bed. Amen. One night I had the experience of hell first. It was hell. And um, I remember the kids out in the living room and everything, watching TV and everything. And um, and it was late at night. I was in the bed because I had to get up and go to work the next morning. And and so it was. I was asleep, but I wasn't, right? And hell, hell came straight to me. I was going to say hell came down. Hell doesn't come down. Let me get that right. Hell came up to me, right? And um, it swooped me to the bed. I remember holding onto the bed. And it was dark, like the swoop, like the dark uh, funnel. I gave this testimony that you see on the movie Ghost, right? Yeah. How it calmed them silhouettes. It was silhouettes all around the room. It was the weirdest, scariest thing I ever experienced. I thought I was dead already because death that way is, is worse than any shooting or or anything else you could get. And those the silhouettes were coming at me, and it was it had this awful noise. It was the worst noise, and it was pulling at me off my bed, and I was holding hard to the bed. I don't know how I was holding on to that bed, and that noise was woo, 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 all kinds of ugly noises, and it was this black stuff trying to swoop me into that funnel, and I was holding and holding, and then when I did wake up, oh my God. That was right there. God letting me know I'm not going nowhere. Amen. I ain't going nowhere. And then I don't know if it was a week later, I had the heaven experience. I was in the bed, and I was, I remember laying on my back, and I remember sleeping, but not sleeping. God, you know, you'll be in that between space, okay? And um, come from heaven. It did come down this time. It was the brightest light, another funnel, the brightest light came down on my bed, and it had me, it swooped me up into this bright light. You see how I'm trying to get dramatic about it? Because I'm trying to explain it but it can't be explained so it swooped me up into this bright light and i was going up slowly in the awe like oh oh everything felt light everything felt beautiful it felt oh my god i remember like inhaling exhaling like oh the power of it the serenity of it the beauty of it the everything of it and so, oh, oh, and so it took me all the way up 
And then finally, slowly, it drove me. All, and I was in this light, this tunnel of light. It took me all the way back down. And through that tunnel of light, it was still just the honest of it. You can feel yourself going back down. And the lower I got back down, I started like feeling like, oh, no, no. Because it was so beautiful up there. And even as I got back down to the bed, and I woke up, and it was like, whoa, I want to be there. It was the best thing. And I explained it. The next day, I talked to the kids, and I told them what my experience was. And I said, to tell y'all the truth, I did not want to come back. I can't lie. I love y'all. You know, mommy loves you. I did not want to come back. And I see, God will give those moments. You have to have those moments. Yours may be different from mine, right. but if you have not had some type of an experience, because it's heaven, it's you meeting heaven, earth yes. meeting heaven, yes. letting you know that heaven is real. Yes. Did you, you, you might want to check it and, and you might want to get, get, get whatever you have to get to get that. Seriously. Because God is so awesome. He lets you see heaven. He lets you taste heaven. He lets you know what heaven is about. He's not a God that he just makes us think, oh, you know, what's to come, what's going to happen. He'll actually show you the power of it. Amen? Amen. 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 I went way out there, and I had to. And so, I actually, another definition of that word poverty, look at this one here. You might want to just write this one down. One who impoverishes himself. Wow. Come on, shake yourself, wake up to it. One who impoverishes himself. And so that word, Yarash, is a primitive root to occupy by driving out previous tenants. That thing comes to occupy, right? Poverty comes to occupy by driving out previous tenants. It wants to occupy you. It wants to, um, it, it, driving out previous tenants and possessing in their place by implication to cease or to rob. It comes to cease you and snatch you and it comes to rob. Poverty has, has robbed and gone through so many generations. Yeah. I thought that was awesome how it seizes you and robs you. So I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being seized and stolen, things stolen from me. Yes. The only one I want seizing me is Jesus. Yes. I want that apostle experience, right? To so it means to inherit, also to expel, to impoverish, to ru ruin, to cast out, consume, destroy, disinherit, dispossess. So driving out. without fail. And so, so poverty has no boundaries or restrictions. It travels rapidly through your house and destroys generations. It's multifaceted, as I mentioned earlier. If it shows up in one area, then you better believe it has traveled in wildfire throughout other areas of your life. If you are living an impoverished life, you are setting yourself up for disinheritance. Mm. Wow. How can you inherit the things the Father has for you and have given to us freely, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if there are other things, you know, that are that are holding and blocking that area, that are taken from you and stealing from you. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. There ain't no slew for the devil walking around with horns and a tail. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Amen. The enemy of other areas, of other things, you know, that come poverty comes to do that, take from you and rob from you. <clears throat> so poverty speaks of a drive out and something else possessing your land. Write down Numbers 33 and 55. I'm not going to go there because I'm going to go ahead and try to get through this. You can go there if you want or you can just... <clears throat> 